Yes, test. Good morning. Well, for you that were dreaming of a white Christmas, <laughs> it's here. Not too bad, though. Kind of, uh, it kind of hit us lightly, and uh, we didn't have three feet of snow at first. So it's, it's all good. It's good to see you this morning. Others are coming in. Let's all stand together and open in a word of prayer. Father God, we thank you for your many blessings. We thank you for this time of the year when we celebrate the birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We thank you so much for the gift that you give to us freely, the gift of salvation. And uh, Lord, may we never ever take for granted that. So we bless you. We just pray, Lord, as we enter into worship this morning in your word, that it would find a logic place in our hearts. We thank you for this, and we bless you, and all of God's people said, Amen. 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 Well, turn around, shake hands with your neighbor, and let's welcome one another. No. Check, check, check. Test. Everybody get a handshake? I trust everybody did. Amen. Celebrations we love to recall Mary had a baby boy in Bethlehem The greatest celebration of them all Come on, ring those bells like the Christmas tree Jesus is the King born for you and me Come on, ring those bells, everybody say Jesus, we remember it's your birthday Come on, ring those bells, light the Christmas tree. Jesus is the King, born for me. Come on, ring those bells, everybody say. Jesus, we remember this your birthday. Celebrations come because of something good. Celebrations we love to recall. Mary had a baby boy in Bethlehem, the greatest celebration of them all. Come on, ring those bells, light the Christmas tree. Jesus is the King, born for you and me. Come on, ring those bells, everybody say. Jesus, we remember this your birthday. Jesus, we remember this your birthday. Jesus, we remember this your birthday. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Jesus, we remember this your birthday. Thank you, Lord. 25. Joy to the world, the what? The Lord has come, amen. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let her Let every heart prepare 
sing in my ear. Did you... I have no keyboard in my ear. Huh? Okay. It cut out for some reason. Oh, well. You can be seated. <clears throat> Technology, eh? It's a good thing I have a monitor here because I can't hear anything, so... I'm going to watch your lips move, okay? No. Uh, G110. Angels from the realms of glory, wing your flight o'er all the earth. Amen. Angels from the realms of glory, bring your flight o'er all the earth. Ye who sang creation's story, now proclaim Messiah's birth. Come and worship, come and worship, worship Christ the newborn King. Shep in the fields of Bible, watching all the flock by night. God with men is now residing under shed the infant light. Come and worship, come and worship, worship Christ the newborn King. He Welcome you here, Lord Jesus. 
Come have your way among us. We welcome you here, Lord Jesus. Come and worship, worship Christ, the newborn King. God is with us, even now His love is here. Sing that again. Come and worship, worship Christ, the newborn King. God is with us, even now His love is here. His love is here. Amen. saves us worthy of all our praises Emmanuel Emmanuel come have your way among us we welcome you here Lord Jesus come have your way Worship Christ, the newborn King. Amen. God is with us, even now His love is here. God is with us, Emmanuel. Even now His love is here. Thank you, Father. There's some announcements, and uh, you have them in your bulletin. Maverick does a fantastic job with the bulletin, doesn't she? Yeah.
How are we doing? Any more? We have one reindeer. And uh, offering, okay. Father God, thank you for all of these kids. We pray your blessing upon them as they, as they go through this busy time, Lord, Christmas season. And uh, we all love the gifts. We all love the presents. But Lord, may we uh, be mindful of you as well. And I pray that you would touch their young lives now, Lord, as they go to Children's Church. Just bless them. Be with the teachers as well, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. amen. And amen. So I just found out what was wrong with my, my sound. It was that it was unplugged. <laughs> and I'm sure that Candace did that. No, not really. Amen. We bring an offering of worship to the Lord today for he is worthy amen over the skies of Bethlehem appeared a star while angels sang to lowly shepherds three wise men seeking truth Travel from afar, hoping to find the child from heaven, falling on their knees, they bow before the humble Prince of Peace. I bring an offering. Praises that I see. Jesus, may you receive the honor that you're due. Oh Lord, I bring an offering to you. The sun. Bring it off. 
our hands to him this morning and we surrender ourselves to him. I bring an offering of worship to my King. No one on earth deserves the praises that I sing. Jesus, may you receive the honor that you're before you today. Surrender. Take my life and let it be consecrated, Lord, to thee. Thank you, Jesus. There's a little chorus that says, Oh, come, let us adore Him. Oh, come, let us adore Him. Oh, come, let us adore
Amen. Step down from heaven, humbly you came, God of all creation, here with us, in a star like manger. ring to the newborn king peace on earth here with us joy awakening at your feet we fall angels sing praises ring to the newborn king peace on earth here with us joy awakening at your feet we fall angels sing praises ring to the newborn Born King, peace on earth, here with us, joy awakening at your feet before. Adore, 
Just worship him for a moment this morning. We worship you, Jesus. We worship you, Lord. We worship you, Jesus. Just sing, praises ring to the newborn king. Peace on earth, here with us, joy awaken. At your feet we fall. Angels sing, praises ring to the newborn king. Peace on earth, here with us, joy awakening. At your feet. just so beautiful. You stepped down from heaven. Humbly you came. God of all creation, here with us in a star-like manger. Emmanuel, light of the world, here to save. Grab that one on YouTube when you go home. Uh, Chris Tomlin. And uh, just worship the Lord as you listen to that. It's, It's so beautiful. Wise men brought their treasures. Shepherds bowed low. Angel voices sing of peace on earth. What have I to offer to heaven's king? I will bring my life, my love, my all. Adore. Thank you, Lord. Thanks, team, for your help. So, I don't, <clears throat> are we on here? Yeah. I don't know if you remember, uh, a few Sundays ago, um, I suggested that uh, Candace dress up uh, to match the manger scene, and she wore a colorful sweater this morning, but uh, I think she got mad at me when I suggested that because um, I was to speak this morning and uh, she texted me and she said, would you mind leading too? And I said, are you trying to kill me? And uh, she said, no, but Marv is. Yeah, he's not here. Anyway, they were, they were going to be away and decided after she got out of leading, then she decided they weren't going to go away. <laughs> but um, anyway, here we are. I was reading somewhere, uh, actually I, uh, I got it down here, it says someone had developed a personality test based on how you decorate your Christmas tree. <clears throat> if you have nothing but multicolored lights, how many have m- just multicolored lights? On their tree. So if you have multicolored lights on your tree, you're an extrovert. 
I don't know how they figure that stuff out. If you only have white lights, then that means you're the type who asks the guests to remove their shoes at the front door. How many have blinking lights? You have blinking lights, then you have ADD. If your tree has uh, homemade ornaments, then you have lots of kids. If you string popcorn uh, to put on your tree, then you have uh, too much time on your hands. Um, if you use nothing but red decorations, you secretly wish that you lived in a department store. Uh, I'm not sure about that one. If your tree has a vague evergreen smell, then you bought a healthy tree. If it has a strong evergreen smell, then it's quite possible that you sprayed pine salt on it. And if your tree is just plain smelly, then you probably have a dead bird in your tree. <clears throat> anyway, I don't know about that. That's for free. I want to share this morning all but silent that night. And uh, taken from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 2, uh, the first 20 verses. All but silent that night. Um, there, there's, many, there's many beautiful pictures that form in our minds as we approach the Christmas season. Um, as we approach the birth of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, there are many beautiful pictures that form in our mind. A, a quiet winter night, uh, well, tonight will be snow now, and sometimes not snow. A celestial spotlight from a starry star shining down from heaven to the lowly manger as it highlights the birth of our Lord. And that's a beautiful, beautiful picture. Uh, livestock in awe as they look on uh, at the Savior there. Shepherds in humble worship. Um, we can see all of these on Christmas cards. Some beautiful, beautiful Christmas cards. Uh, some of them, you know, have like... Um, imprint and they're uh, like 3D and they're just beautiful cards and some beautiful writings inside. Angels hovering nearby. Uh, Wise men on their camels traveling from afar with expensive gifts to present to Jesus. Um, Beautifully beautiful pictures. And then of course we pull out the the carol book and uh, or the hymn book and we look at the beautiful carols in there um, and, I, and I guess one of the best known Christmas carols depicts the solitude, the picture that I just described of the, you know, the light shining down on the manger and uh, all of the surroundings. One of the best known carols depicts the solitude, uh, and that is silent night, holy night, all is calm, all is bright, sleep in heavenly peace. Um, now, it's not my intention to pick that carol apart or to degrade it, um, make light of it. But, and, and I know the intent of the carol, and we love that carol. Um, but that holy night was not a silent night by any stretch of the imagination. As we look into the story, um, number one, I want to share with you that it wasn't silent in Bethlehem. It wasn't silent. You have your little point sheets there. Get, get them out and fill in the blanks. It'll kind of keep your mind um, attentive to what we're talking about here. It wasn't silent in Bethlehem. In Luke chapter 2, verses 1 to 7, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire, of the entire Roman world. Can you imagine? This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria. And everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to Bethlehem, the town of David, 
because he belonged to the house and line of, of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth uh, to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloth and placed him in a manger because there was no room in the inn. And so right off the start, it says that there was decreed a census to be taken. A census, it was census time. And every year, Romans forced the people into doing this. It wasn't just kind of a voluntary thing. It was something that was forced upon them to take a census. And at the same time, how convenient was it that they were to be taxed? At the same time that the census, how convenient was that? We got everybody here now, we're going to take a census, and we're also going to tax them above, uh, above that. And so people had to travel to their place of birth. Can you imagine if we had to, all of us, the place of birth, we had to travel every year to our place of birth? How would you like that? The towns would have been bustling with people. The towns would have been bursting at the seams. And, and neither the visitors nor the, uh, the locals would have been very happy about this decree. And they probably would have been like us. They would have been grumbling and complaining. And uh, nobody was happy because they, were, they had to do this. It was very expensive to do this, to go back to their town. And not only that, not only the expenses of getting there, but they were taxed on top of that. And so nobody was happy. Probably the tempers would have been very, very short. They would have had a short fuse on their, on their, on their tempers here as their lives are being disrupted. Can you imagine the disruption of their lives and their, their workplace and all of that? They had to drop everything and go back to the place where they were born so that they could be, uh, take the census and then be taxed. Their lives were <clears throat> disrupted. They were inconvenienced. They were forced back to the place of their birth. And on top of all of this, because we know at Christmas time, you know, when people are hustling and bustling and they're shopping, guess where do the prices go? The prices go up through the roof. And so people were inflating their prices as they were traveling along the, the, the roads and, and uh, they needed supplies and they needed this and that. The prices were inflated and they were paying premium for things. And not only that, because so many people were, were traveling, there would be a lack of supplies. They would run out. No sugar. <laughs> we heard that one. <clears throat> A lack of supplies. Everything was filled to capacity. No room and, you know, crowded places and all of that. And people were traveling. Prices inflated. Accommodations full. And probably the only ones that were happy were the merchants who were making a killing off of these people. And still are. The expectations of these people were great. The demands were great on these people. Do you ever have a Christmas like that? The demands are great. The expectations are great. Too many expectations, too many demands. Despite your best efforts, for a perfect Christmas, someone messes up. Any number of things to spoil the celebration. There's not enough money. Relationships may be sour. There's an illness, a death. We can identify with that day back then when there was the hustle and bustle and there was the, all of the things pertaining to And sometimes we need to step back for a moment and, and take our eyes 
and her emotions off the trappings and off the surroundings and return to the holy day when we remember the manger and the babe and the one that came to save us and to give us life, a ransom for us. And so there was a lot of things happening that day. It wasn't so silent in Bethlehem. Secondly, it wasn't silent in the Judean hills. Verse 8 says, And there were shepherds living out in the field nearby, keeping watch over their fields at night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them in the and the what? And the glory of the, the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Don't be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born. He is Christ the Lord. And the sign will be a baby wrapped in strips of cloth. And in verse 13, look what it says. In verse 13 it says, And suddenly... A great company of the heavenly hosts appeared to, uh, with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to men on whom his favor rests. It wasn't silent in the hills of Judea. The shepherds were in the fields, the scripture says, and the angel of the Lord appears, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were they are terrified and and then they were comforted and said, you, you don't need to be afraid. And I like verse 13, where it says, and suddenly, boo, just like that. Suddenly, there was a great company. I don't know how many was a great company, but there was a great company of heavenly hosts that came as backup. They were backup for the other angel. They played back up a great company of the heavenly hosts as they, as they shouted out, as they sang out, as they, as they worshiped, and it filled the hills. The voices filled the hills as they sang glory to God. Ah, boy, what a, what a scene that would have been. Pierced through the silence of the night, glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to men on whom his favor rests. And then verse 16 to 20 says this. After they had kind of picked themselves up off the ground, after they had kind of went, what, what was all that? And they maybe conversed a little bit and, and said, did you see? Yeah, I saw. Yeah, oh, yeah. It says in verse 16 to 20, so they hurried off. They were so excited, these shepherds. They just, they just hurried off. Left the sheep, maybe. I don't know what what happened to the sheep they hurried off suddenly a great host disappeared and the shepherds hurried off they were pumped they were so excited they were curious they were chattering probably all the way chattering they were just giving her as they were as they were chattering along the way and broke the silence of the night and they come scurrying into town and I can only imagine that as they came into town, they caused such a commotion. These stinky old, maybe young shepherds, they come marching into town. And they are just so excited. Now, the, the shepherds are not the most respected people. The shepherds not on top of the most respected list. It's the least people you'd expect God to take notice of. They were religious outcasts, actually. The Jewish law says that said that they were unclean. Can you imagine? They were social outcasts. They were constantly on the move. They were moving, you know, with the sheep. And uh, it, was, it was so exciting. When we were in Israel and we were driving in the bus, I looked out the window 
And over on the side of the hills, we could see the shepherds. In, dressed just like, you know, you'd expect them. With their long garments and their, their uh, whatever they put on their head, probably to shield the sun. And there they were. They were religious outcasts. The Jewish law says they were unclean. They were social outcasts. As they were constantly on the move, they were, they were viewed as suspicious people. They were, they were accused of being thieves. They weren't considered trustworthy. And here they come into town and they're all excited. They're excited about what happened, what took place. And they're not very well-dressed people. They're smelly. And they're causing a commotion. And these shepherds were shunned by the people of the day, but they were not shunned by God. They were the first to hear the gospel. They were the first to lay their eyes on Jesus. They couldn't be quiet about their experience. I'm sure that they told everyone and everybody what had happened that what had happened to them that night. Great celebration. Not silence. In Bethlehem, not silence in the Judean hills. And guess what? Thirdly, it wasn't silent in the realms of heaven. Have you ever been told something so thrilling and exciting that you just couldn't keep quiet? You just couldn't keep... I remember one time when Rochelle was smaller. Kathy remembers this. <clears throat> I got a purse for Kathy for Christmas. I, Rachel came shopping. And I said to Rachel, I said, uh, now don't you tell mom. Oh, no. Don't you tell mom I bought her a purse. Well, we had no longer met Kathy. And she says, mom, dad bought you something, and it's not a purse. <laughs> it's not a purse. She was so excited. We see the excitement from the angels. And it was too exciting for the angels to remain quiet. On the night that Jesus was born, there had to be a party in heaven. There was a party, as it were, in heaven. Angels, by their nature, they worship. Angels, by their nature, they serve. Angels, by their nature, they represent God. Now the promise of all the ages has come through, true. And they were celebrating and worshiping and singing glory to God in the highest as the skies broke with, with angels and lights. They couldn't shut up about it. The celebrations overflowed and spilled out from the eternal heaven to the heavenlies and to the, the very place where Jesus entered time and space and became one of us. The good news that cannot be contained and it cannot be contained in our lives as well. We speak forth the truth that Jesus has come to save, to seek and to save that which was lost. We were lost, but now we're found because Jesus came. It wasn't silent in Bethlehem. It wasn't silent in the, the Judean hills. It wasn't silent in heaven. And number four, what? It was not silent in hell. Now, I, I, I couldn't find any scripture references that specifically tells us this. There, there are no scriptures references specifically telling us this. But we need to understand that Satan is the arch enemy of Jesus. He's the arch enemy of God and of all humanity. And I'm sure that he must have been shouting in rage. 
He must have been screaming. The enemy, Satan, the enemy must have been screaming in rage over the events that were transpiring that, transpiring that day in Bethlehem. Did you know that the first prediction of God sending a Savior was made to Satan? The first prediction of God sending a Savior was made to the serpent in the Garden of Eden. After Adam and Eve fell, God promised that a descendant of the woman would come to crush and defeat the serpent. You will be crushed. And only one person could accomplish that task. And there he was, being birthed by Mary. And lying in a feeding trough in a noisy, overcrowded, crazy town where so many people were, just like in the Philippines. Satan was not happy, hell is in an uproar. Hell is in, is in, it, it's upheaval. It, it's, I you can only imagine. The forces of hell against the Savior that day. The devil is still trying to get rid of Christmas. <laughs> huh? More and more and more. We're not going to go into all of that, but he is. The forces of, of hell is against the real meaning of Christmas. The battle rages, but guess what? The scripture says that we are conquerors, and we're more than conquerors. Isaiah chapter 54, verse 17, I think we have it up there. No weapon forged against you will prevail, and you will refute every tongue that accuses you. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and this is their vindication from me, declares the Lord. How wonderful is that? Isaiah chapter 41, verse 10 says, and I think we have that one up there. It says, so do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. All who rage against you will surely be ashamed and disgraced. Those who oppose you will be as nothing and perish. Though you search for your enemies, you will not find them. Those who rage war against you will be as nothing at all. For I am the Lord your God who takes hold of your right hand and says to you, do not fear, I will help you. The Lord is with us. And though hell rages today, though the foes come against, the Lord is with us in every battle. He strengthens us. He delivers us. He foils every attack of the enemy and gives us the victory today. We need not fear, but put our trust in the one who came as a babe in a manger. He is the Lord of Lords. He is the King of Kings. Oh, come, let us adore him, Christ the Lord. In the midst of all of the chaos, and there was a lot of chaos, a lot of things happening with that crowd. A lot of chaos, but in the midst of all the chaos, in the midst of all of the noise, Jesus is Lord to the glory of God. In the midst of all of the noise, it was not a silent night, but it was a holy night. 
Don't forget, it was a holy night. Jesus, the Son of God. God's plan coming to fruition. God's plan and purpose coming together. The beginning of the story, as it were, of Jesus being born in a manger. The story of the manger that would lead to Easter Sunday when he would die and be buried and rise again so that we could have life. Oh, this morning, oh, come. I want us to stand and sing. Oh, come, let us adore him again. Oh, come, let us adore him. Oh, yes, there was chaos. There was lots of noise, lots of things happening. People taking advantage of people. Crowded streets, crowded buildings. Just trying to get to where they were supposed to get. And being forced to do this, being taxed. And being forced into a census and all of the things. And, and all of the things that we face in our life today. Not the same, but we face things yet. We come, as it were, to the babe in a manger. We worship. We worship him. Let's just close our eyes this morning. And if you feel comfortable lifting your hands, and you say, Jesus, today, in spite of all of the chaos, of all of the noise, of all of the trappings, of all of the things surrounding this time of the year, I lift my hands in worship. I lift my heart in worship to you today. And I adore you, Christ the Lord. Sing it out to the glory of God. Worship Him this morning. beside you there is none greater we thank you that you're our Savior and you're our Lord and in spite of circumstances in spite of all of the things around us we take a few moments to just thank you God for the gift of your son we thank you for the love of Jesus and being willing to come from the splendors of heaven. To come this to this earth, 
born and die and rise again. Thank you for the life that we have in you, Jesus. We bless you today. Lord, as we leave this place, may we be ever mindful. May we never take for granted such great a salvation. It is free, but it costs you so much. It costs you your life. And for that, we are ever grateful today. And we bless you, Jesus. As we leave, Lord, may the peace of God, may the peace that passes all understanding guard our hearts. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. Everybody said, Amen. And Amen and Amen. God bless you. Have a good day. We'll see you again. Oh, come, let us. Uh...